pools anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. There you go. I guess we're live now. Um, Google has changed their Hangout menu again, so I can't put my little logo up on the side. Go figure. Google changed something without telling anybody. Good evening, everybody. Um, <laughs> everybody's me. Fortunately, I like talking to myself. I get some really good ideas that way. Um, on my I sketch up you can to Pinterest page. I showed some things I've been doing in my shop. Um, I I have a it was remarketed by Black and Decker. It's a Firestorm collapsible um, work table. I think Kebble or Kribble or something like that still makes it. Walmart had them for fifty bucks. They were handy. Um, they they come included with two. Um, clamps, adjustable hand clamps, and they're really neat, but they don't have any stops on them. So I took my bandsaw, and I've been working with reclaiming pallet wood. This is what happens when the nail snaps off and you're pulling on a nail with a crowbar. Um, no, 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 no. Dumb. Actually, it wasn't. At least I got my. I felt it snap, and I got my face back far enough. It only binged me. It didn't hit me right in the eye with the edge of the crowbar. Normally, I was using crowbars that are about oh yay long, about 12, 14 inches. Well, this time I had a 24 incher. Man, I go bang. Oh yeah. Mm, not a good idea. So, um, anyway, um, I posted some of the little um, homemade bandsaw uh, stop locks I created for my work table here. And I also um, took some photos and posted them of an old Stanley number no. 5 plane. Um, I believe that plane had something missing from it. I don't know if somebody in the past changed out the frog or what, but I couldn't get any adjustment um, of the blade um, to cut. The The mouth was only like an eighth of an inch, maybe five, thirty seconds open. And you couldn't do anything with it. If when you pull a, pull a blade back, pull, pull the whole frog assembly back, and I'm doing things where you can't, it's not a camera, pull the frog assembly back to open it up, and then the blade would start deflecting up from where it was hitting the rear edge of the mouth. So I, mean, I was going nuts with this thing. It was a fun rebuild project. I just, um, the day before yesterday, I took some small files out, and I clamped that sucker to my little folding workbench, and I started going to town on it. And it works nice now. Um, I was playing around with the... Um, shape of the um, blade. And first I had it ground real nice and completely flat. Well, what I did is I ended up, just for the heck of it, because it's, you know, it's old, I ended up rounding off the outside corners of the blade. Um, it cuts in the middle, but it doesn't cut right at the edge. Now you're going to say, well, I can't use it for a lot of events. I can use it for what I want. And I can buy another blade for it and just swap the blade out real quick if I want a perfectly flat one. I also have a uh, cobalt thirty dollar was it thirty bucks or was it twenty bucks? Thirty dollar cobalt special from Lowe's that took considerable work, but um, it has a wide mouth. So I'm thinking if one has got one and I can adjust it, and I can't adjust the other one, maybe I need to do some tweaking. So I did, and it. I've got them both working. Um, for the price I paid on the Cobalt, um, I think, yeah, I had to do some work, and I did it the hard way because I didn't start out with my um, sandpaper grit coarse enough because I wanted to do it slow. I didn't want to screw something up. I worked, and I worked, and I worked, and I worked on it. I got that sucker flat, 
and what I use to do that is a um, granite tile from Home Depot for like four dollars, either three eighty six or four eighty six, twelve by twelve, and then I just laid um, sandpaper on it, and just kept smoothing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It came out really nice. I am impressed with myself. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now, what else have I been doing outside that would be fun to talk about? Um, trying to learn how to cut joints, as a matter of fact. But mostly I've been pulling these pallets apart. And on uh, one of the woodworking sites in uh, on Facebook, I posted that in one, in one of these pallets that I knocked apart, I came up with some wood that has some beautiful purple streaking in it. It's just gorgeous. Um, one of my friends, who may actually end up watching this eventually, Steve Carmichael, um, suggested it might be poplar. I knew poplar had green streaks, but I wasn't sure. It didn't know they had purple. But man, it's a pretty color. I'm going to do something special with the purple streaking. That's that's going to be fun. Okay, now we're, tonight we're going to talk wood joints. Um, wood, not cannabis joints. Okay, and let's get this straight. Although, I think we should legalize cannabis all across the USA. Um, it was a fraud when it was outlawed in the first place. Um, back in the 30s, popular, in fact, I should search for that magazine. I know where it's at. Popular Mechanics was, was had at least one article about the new biomass material, they didn't call it that then, but basically, um, hemp. It, it makes better paper, longer lasting paper. Um, you get more growth per acre than trees. It just does a lot of things really, really well. You can get high off of one type of it, but it's a one variety there. So hemp and marijuana are not exactly the same plant. They're close. But one is a lot more woo than the other one is. But big business was controlling the government. Oh, big business never controls the U.S. government. Where am I coming from? So like a conspiracy theory. And <coughs> so they got it outlawed. Reefer madness. If you, if you want to see something insane, check that on YouTube. Some of those things are just... I'm pretty weird, but they made me look normal, guys. Okay, I'm going to go into screen share. <coughs> and <coughs> I hope I can make it, make it through the class. What I did is I searched for wood joints in Google under images. Um, and you actually, you get a lot of them that you can see very easily. Let's just pop one open and see what... Okay, these are a dovetail, mortise and tenon. There's really only in the West. Okay, we won't talk about Japanese wood joints because they're bizarre. I like them, but they're bizarre. Um, you got only a few different types. Your typical butt joint, you can either dowel it, pocket hole it, um, screw it, nail it. You can glue it, but it ain't going to hold very well. Um, a dado which is, again, it's a little better if you glue it because you got some, uh, actually, no, you don't. It's, it's still all uh, ingrained to ingrain. Um, pretty much the same with a rabbit. You have ingrained to ingrain. Lap joint is getting a little better um, because you've got um, linear grain this way and this way, and I know that's not the right term, and my brain just went into fuzz. Dovetails, Morris and tenons, splines, tongue and groove. Okay, that's a bunch of those. Let's look at a picture of a prettier picture of a dovetail. Um, someplace in here there's one of some really massive wood joints. They're really slick. I like this one. This, uh, if I can go to that actual, I didn't want to go to that page, but that's where I ended up. Oh, here we are. You can find some really weird things by poking some of these uh, pictures here. Um, so far, as long as you stay with the images that are there, you don't go really crazy, but you got to watch sometimes when you're poking buttons. 
I like this large dovetail right here for a um, for a brace joint. And you can also do this, and I'll try to show it. Um, you can do this at an angle, like if you have a 45. Um, you can do some interesting things with these. And I don't know. I can't read these. I don't know if that says coked or cogged, but it's it's a double. Geez, what would you call it? Um, a double dado, kind of miter type thing. Never saw that one before, but it's interesting. Let's go back and look at some more. And you got to be careful because sometimes you hit the wrong X button and you just go completely out. Oh, one thing that the other one didn't have um, that we'll probably see here someplace is your simple um, finger joint or box joint. This is a nice joint. Um, it's called the bridle joint, and it's at an angle. That would be really nice. Um, we'll look some more, see what they've got here. Let's go to a large page of that if it'll let us. <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted. Okay, let's go back. There's another one that I won't do tonight because I don't have a piece of wood in here. Um, it's like a mortise and tendon splide joint. It's really cool, but it's sort of like putting <coughs> picture frames together. It's almost like this one down here, um, except that the spline is kind of built in. Now this is a slick one. I am not going to show you how to do this one, but it's there. Once you learn how to do um, Facebook, you can go get this one. It's a beautiful joint. In fact, that one might be an eastern one. CNC cabin tree. looking through some more to see if we find something really, really interesting. There's your finger joint. There's a knee joint. Ah! <laughs> ah! You can do that with a... Uh, <laughs> a wooden joint for puppets. Yeah, it's cute. This is a pretty one. Um, a wood corner joint. My guess is it's probably um, two half laps put together in a uh, and of course it doesn't go where you're looking at when you go to the page. That one. Kind of a bridle joint. Bridle joint here. And half laps here to hold everything in. That's actually a pretty joint. I like that one. But now it's a really simple one. We'll do that one first. Okay. Do we see? Yes, we have. I'll delete that. And I'll make a square using the, the little. Uh, let's make it 3.5 comma 3.5. You can see that down in my dimensions tab down in the bottom. The tab I picked first, I'll go back and highlight. It says rectangle. Um, okay. <coughs> I'll extend this one up. Just, <coughs> just a given dimension. And I'm going to make this whole thing a component. Triple mouse button one, my hotkey is shift C, 
and create component comes up. Always verify that this is replace selection with component. Now, I'm not going to do my first work in the component. I'm going to do it outside so I can get some lines in that don't affect what I'm doing. Midpoint, 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 midpoint. Now, I have four separate. I can actually hide this and I'll do that. Mouse button one, mouse button three, hide. Now you can see that I have four elements up there. Okay, I'll unhide this one, mouse button one, mouse button three, gets me back to this. <coughs> I'm going to go into my component now, and I'm going to use the tape measure tool to create some guidelines based on the original lines there. And I will offset one. Um, let's do it three sixteenths. Good. I'm going to use a piece of. And it does it every once in a while. I'm going to use a piece of three eighths lumber in these two pieces right here. It can be bigger. That's just what I want to use right now. I can't drag that thing out of the way well enough. There we go. Okay. Go into um, rectangle again. No, do not go into rectangle because you're not in the component. Now go into rectangle again. Rectangle, 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 rectangle. If I would have done this, these two rectangles as a whole, full rectangle, it had gotten goofy in here. So that's why I did two short ones and then a long one. So I want to go to this button, which I call extrude and I want to go down 3.5 inches. I want to do the same thing with why did that go up? Control Z down 3.5. Guys it's not supposed to go up when you when you do this. It's supposed to remember the direction. So one nice thing about this is it does what it wants all too often. So now, I have a nice corner post for something with some slots in it. Now I need to get rid of my guidelines first. Up here, edit, delete guides. And I will also highlight this. Mouse button one, mouse button three will um, bring up this menu. I'll click and drag and get rid of those lines I put in first. Okay, unhide this one. Now, I'm going to use a plugin which I got from woodworlds.com. And let's make it 20 inches. And we'll go into make this 3.5 and 0.375. So I've got a board. Now in this board someplace, I'm going to make that board active and I'm going to put some guidelines on here. And I'll take this guideline and inset it. Let's do 2.5 inches. I'm not sure that's enough, but we'll try it. And we'll do 0.375 again. And now we have the ability by creating those elements to make a rectangle. What? 
we dropped out of our component. So let's go back into the component, make it active, hotkey R for rectangle, and we'll go into it. And we'll get rid of the guides again because something's acting goofy. There. I was in the wrong component. Ha 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 ha. All right, make this one active. When you do that, don't get rid of the geometry you've just created. If you've done an oops, leave it there because you can still use it. Now hide component one. No, hide component two. Because we want to get rid of this face that we created in the other model. Now unhide. And we have something we can make. A push pull, which is a dumb thing to say. And extrude. And we're going to extrude it all the way past. Now I'm going to copy this. Copy, rotate, spin, and a whole bunch of other things. So make, uh, here we go. Select that component and move it that way. Now I want to rotate this one. So this is my rotate tool. I want to rotate this one just vertically. I want to rotate this one, the other vertical. And I want to take this one and rotate it around the blue axis 90 degrees. Now, I'm going to, while I'm at it, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it into there. And now I have my two side pieces like we see in the picture. Get the picture out of the way, select both of these, and I'm going to take this intersection point, and I'm going to use that to move both of these Danger, Will Robinson, danger, you grabbed the wrong thing, dude. Okay, here we go. Now, we have our caged, mitered, or not mitered, but caged, bridled, half-lapped, whatever. <laughs> now, let's put some color into it. I haven't gotten into color for uh, in a while. So the paint bucket button is down here. I have created some extra color in my wood. I'm going to make this part Guara, Guahara, or whatever it's called. And I'm going to make these light maple horizontal. That is a pretty joint. And you can see it really didn't take that long to figure this out. Um, all straight lines, rectangles, easy to do. Okay, let's bring this picture back over here. This one full size again, and turn this one off, turn that one off, and we'll go back. Oh, that one's kind of insane. I wish that picture were bigger. What I'm doing is I'm holding the control key down and using my mouse wheel to zoom up. Um, rah! I didn't expect it to change pages on me. Change it all the way out. Okay, that was just through dowels. They were probably um, locked. Hey, we're back. Um, I'm going to look at that one more later on. That looks kind of cute.
here's another variation on a finger joint. That's this is done with a uh, router bit. We're not going to go into biscuits; they're too simple. I think on those, I would on on the drawing that I'm working on for myself, I wouldn't even bother showing these. I'd just say biscuit joint. Um, but if I want to know what I am, the angles and things I've got to set up, I would go ahead and create a model and then get some information off of that. Like this is a scarf joint. Section from the book, and it's really, really big because it jumped to where I was. Okay, it looks like a scarf joint. The basic one is a half lap, but this gives it some mechanical structure um, because of the angle on it. And then here's a, another one with a reverse angle um, that you, you put a reinforcing plate over. This one gets really bizarre. We won't go into that one yet. Scarf joint with bead ends. Never heard of that one, but it's pretty. Okay, we'll just do a quick scarf joint here. Grab all this stuff, get rid of it, <coughs> create another. Let's change my view. I disagree with that ISO view. Should look that way. Um, <coughs> okay, another rectangle. Twenty comma three point five. I double mouse click one, shift C to my control um, hotkey to create a component, and I'm going to make this one three quarter of an inch thick. So grab that, the extrude button. And start it to move, give it a direction, and type in three quarters. Now, I'm going to put outside of this component, I am going to put a guide in there. Right on that. I'm going to make that guide go up 0.375 so it's halfway. I'm going to put one here and move it down 3.5. Now, if I just take and make a rectangle here, we'll have that simple half lap. So I'll go ahead and do that, just simply to show that it can be done. And I'll show that all the way through. There. No sweat. Control Z, Control Z, get it back. Now, what I really want, just for to give us an angle here, um, I don't want, I don't. Now, maybe they did in, no, it doesn't look like in the picture. They actually have it offset a little bit. So I'm going to take and make another guide, which is the tape measure function, Bruce. You know where it's at. I'm going to make it down 330 seconds. Why? I don't know. Sounds good to me. I'm going to do the same thing up here. I will go back and activate my part again, and I will use these grayed out guidelines to create a wedge. Now, actually, I don't like that. We're going to go through with it. I should have only done it the 16th. I think I just made it too weak right here, even though what we're going to do is copy this. Copy. I'm going to copy it straight up. Now, how I did that, for you guys that haven't checked out my classes before, if you mouse button one, in the outliner, which always use outliner, 
unless you're like some of the uh, people that post in the warehouse and only have sheet solids, so the geometry is no good. I got an argue, uh, into a discussion with a girl on that, so... Um, okay, you, you grab that, then go down to the move key, hold the control <laughs> button down, and it goes up. So I'm going to select it just on the page this time, because that way I know which one I'm getting. I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to rotate that 180 degrees. Now I can select that same one, and I can use, I can move from this corner to this corner. There. I don't like it. moving. And now we have paint bucket again, so we can get some visualization here. Paint bucket. Okay. All B is my hotkey. I get tired of everything. There, we have a scarfed lap joint. That will give some mechanical advantage to this joint. Once it's once it's glued and pressed together, it will be a better joint than a mere half lap. At least theoretically it should be. <coughs> Let's <coughs> come back to our pictures again. We'll go back one. And I'll wait for it to cycle because I've been jumping around too quick on it. Here's another one that has a three-way bevel, and you would do that very similar. In fact, since we'll, we'll actually go to this page, shoulder cheek thickness length width. There's an oblique half joint. I want to go to the one that they actually had in the picture. We're going to do this one also. But that's not the one I want to do right now. Um, oh, I can't find the one I wanted. Okay, what it looks like is. I don't worry about what it looks like. Oh, this is a fine one. Come on, come back here. There we are. <clears throat> what I want to try to do, first get rid of all my guides. Edit, delete guides. Then I'm going to move this one aside and make it unique. Why I have to make it unique is, now to make it unique, mouse button one in the um, outliner, go up here and make unique. Now I have two separate components here. So when I go to work on one, the opposite won't happen to the other one. Um, can I just fix this thing? I don't think so, but let's try. Make this active. I'm going to try to move this corner up. And it didn't do it. It moved. It changed the whole dimension, whole, whole contour of the subsurface. Let me get rid of this one so you can see what that looks like better. better. Um, come on, where's my component? It created its own line element to these two corners to be able to lift this corner up, which is not what I wanted. 
But what I'm going to do is I can get it rotated around here, right? I'm just going to get rid of this face entirely. Best way to do this might be go into rectangle and create from here to there. Then get rid of that little element and push this thing through. And it went bananas between the lines. and see if we can close this end off. Yes, we can. Now, what this joint looks like, let's bring the joint back over and go back. I don't think that joint will fit. Okay, did air time. I was trying to do two things and it wouldn't let me. Okay. So this one shows a single taper on one of them. This one has only a single taper like we had before. This one has a taper going the opposite direction. So let's see if we can bring back our hidden component. Unhide. And what we're going to do is do a new trick here. I'm going to, well, what I'm going to do right now is my new trick. I'm going to rotate this with 90 degrees. 90, 97.5. And I'm going to move it over to this corner. From this corner to this corner. Let's do a line element from here to here. Try to hide this one again. Let's see if we can show this one back. The program doesn't like something, it's generating extra elements. Oh, that's fine. Okay, now, let's pull this one back up. I got no insides! <laughs> let's see if we can make this one active and get some innards on this, this end here. And it actually did work. I thought it was a double taper. It's it's not. It's just taking the same taper and rotating it, rotating it 90 degrees on one of them. So that's a kind of a select little joint. I have shown um, some basic joints. My voice is going, and this has gone 12 minutes longer than I wanted it to. <coughs> if you have any questions about these joints or how to do them, you can contact me several different ways. You can do it through this Google page, this Google Plus page. I also have uh, a Google account under my regular name. 
but this G plus page on iSketchup you can too. Um, I sketch up you can too in Facebook. I will answer those questions. I haven't looked at it for a while because nobody's been asking me anything. Maybe I should. Maybe somebody did. I doubt it. Um, I also have uh, my Pinterest page, which is I sketch up you can too. And then, of course, I'm moderator for um, in woodworlds.com under one of your one of your functions. You can go into <coughs> go into there and send a PM to me. I love questions. It gives me something to do that I don't have to create on my own. That's what took so long on this. I haven't posted in quite a while because I couldn't think of anything worth doing. Uh, I need your input to be able to help you guys. <coughs> so, thanks for listening. Whoever did, I appreciate that. Let me close out um, screen here so I can say goodbye to you in person. There! in my little purple shirt. I am just sweating like crazy. This house is warm. Normally I don't wear shirts here. Or any other clothes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> my wife thinks I'm crazy. Thanks for listening. Um, I'd like to see you live here sometime. I do a lot better when people are asking what I'm doing to slow me down to re reinforce ideas that I skip past because I've hit them in so many of these things. Thank you. Um, this will be posted on uh, Facebook, on iSketchup You Can Do, and it will also be posted in woodworlds.com. And I'm copying the address up here, trying to copy the address. Something has happened, and I don't know if it's with my computer or what, but maybe it's with Komodo, the, the thing I'm using, but <coughs> my uh, feature box, if you want to call it that, doesn't come up. I have to kind of work around it. So thank you. Uh, if I come up with another one or if somebody says, hey, show me some more joints, please, I'll do that. Um, thank you, and thanks for watching. Oh, please like my page on Facebook. I need them. Thanks. <laughs>